having full faith in the prediction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that the holy name of the Lord would be chanted in every town and village. Bhakti Ganotaku. He embarked on a journey uh, to the land of the most fallen, to the land where no one else would go in India. I think there was a term that he used, I'm trying to remember what it was. Anyway, the land of the most degraded personalities. And he went and he embarked on his journey, and as Srila Gurudev was saying, during the journey he suffered two heart attacks. Also seasickness and vomiting. But he persevered, even Krishna himself came in a dream and told him, keep coming, keep coming. So with such determination and such faith, he finally arrived in Boston Harbor in September of 1965. And as Srila Gurudev was saying at that time, he wrote two prayers. In one prayer, as he looked out in Boston skyline, and he saw the citadel of Maya that, that he was about to uh, enter into, he wrote a beautiful prayer. And he said, with the epitome of humility, dependence on Krishna, the heart of the Mahabharata, he wrote, My dear Lord Krishna, you are so kind upon this useless soul. But I do not know why you have brought me here. Now you can do whatever you like with me. But I guess you have some business. Otherwise, why would you bring me to this miserable place? Most of the population here is covered by Rajagun and Tamagun, passion and ignorance. How can they understand this message of Vasudev? But then he said, but I know that your causeless mercy can make anything possible. So I am praying to your mercy that you will deliver them, for I am powerless to do so on my own. Later on he said, I am just like a puppet in your hands. If you have brought me here to dance, then make me dance, O Lord. And he signed his prayer, the most unfortunate, insignificant beggar. A.C. Rocky Vedanta's funded protocol. Shortly after that, he entered into uh, New York City. He had stayed in a place called Butler, uh, Pennsylvania for a while. And with great difficulty, on our behalf and for the pleasure of his Gurudev, he began to establish the order of his Gurudev. And in a short time, he showed the truth that Krishna consciousness is not something that's limited to the land of Bhartwesha, India. But it's the inherent nature of every jiva all over the world. And just like the sun, we used to say, rises in the east, but eventually it moves all over the world. So the, the sun of Krishna consciousness that was being carried in the heart of Srila Prabhupada was now being distributed all over the world. And in a very short time, he made this whole earth planet a holy tear form, with places of pilgrimage all over, under such circumstances. A resident of Goloka Vrindavan, living with hippies, teaching them how to clean themselves, how to eat properly, how to talk properly, how to behave properly. There's another story that one devotee who was there tells that when the first time they went to India, they went to visit um, I guess it was a life member or someone who was uh, very supportive. And there were 10 devotees there with Srila Prabhupada. And everyone didn't know really how to behave properly, so they were being served prasadam. And it was described that one devotee, when Prabhupada would break his chapati, 10 devotees would break off a piece of chapati. When Prabhupada put it in the subji, 10 devotees would put it in the subji, like this. We knew nothing. And Prabhupada took people who were the most unqualified and again established that Jayava Dharma is the inherent nature of every living being. In a short time, as Srila Gurudev was saying, there was a holy name in every town and village. There were books distributed, like Gurudev was saying also in Shamarani Gurudev. In the subways, trains, once one celebrity got off a train, uh, got off a plane and came into the airport and he said, Oh no, they're everywhere, just like this. We were going all over, just, and there weren't that many of us, but it seemed like we were everywhere, because everywhere we went, we were distributing Prabhupada's books. And in a short time, all over the world, Krishna consciousness was spread. 
And then, in 1977, Prabhupada decided to end his pastimes here and departed. In fact, Sheshai Prabhu, who is here singing, Shri Rupa Manjari Padam was there at that time with Srila Prabhupada singing the same song. And Srila Gurudev as well. But when he departed, he gave us another very, very special gift. In fact, the most special gift. An immeasurable gift. At that time, as Shamarani Jiva was saying, he reached out to Srila Gurudev and said, I have brought all these monkeys. Can you please train them? So about 20 years later, Srila Gurudev came to the West. Prabhupada used to call his spiritual master an evangelic angel. So our Srila Prabhupada and our Srila Gurudev, they're both evangelic angels. Traveling all over the world, Srila Gurudev taking so much trouble also on our behalf to establish the real mission of our Srila Prabhupada. In the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada writes, that at the time of the departure of the pure devotee, great upheaval happens and unwanted elements start to spring up in the name of bogus sannyasis, philanthropists, and they disrupt the mission of the spiritual master. So such a thing as we all know happened with an ISKCON. So many unqualified people taking the position of guru, not understanding the real mission of our Srila Prabhupada, disturbed his mission for such a long time that most of us were suffering greatly. And then Srila Gurudev came and he not only told, told us about the breadth of the Himalayan mountains, in other words, the gifts of Srila Prabhupada were so vast, but he also helped us to understand the depth of his gift. What it really meant when Prabhupada said he was a Rupanuga. That he was a dear and dear intimate associate of Srimati Radhika. We would say the Tulsi prayer every day that he had given us, and one of the lines there is, I, I hope that you make me a follower of the cowherd damsel from French. Him being one of them. And also in the story of Shivananda Sain, there's a beautiful story there where by the mercy of Shivananda Sain, a dog got so much mercy because he received affection from Shivananda Sain that at the end he was there being fed coconut bark by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. And then the next day he went back to Gaza. The prophet says in that commentary, even a dog or an animal if they get the mercy of the pure devotee, can be elevated to the highest stage of devotion. And he humbly said about himself, just like my father, he wanted me to be a follower of Srimati Radhika. And somehow or other it has happened. So both Srila Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev have extended their mercy to monkey dogs like me, and in my case, a crazy monkey as well. But they extended their causeless mercy into my life. Help me to understand what was happening to me for those years when Prabhupada was here. Help me to understand what the real subject is. I understood uh, there was a poem, another poem that Prabhupada wrote at that time on the road, where it seemed to be that he was in Satyras. And so many of us were, were perplexed and didn't understand it. And then Guru explained, of course, that all the moods are contained within Vidurya, so he can express some sentiments that way. And then he told me personally, he was a Madhurya Bhakta, do not doubt. So the goal is clearly a sign now, but the mercy of Gurude, we can't actually, as Shamarani Didi was saying, separate Prabhupada and Gurude. To glorify one, by the mercy of the Diksha Guru, one gets a Shiksha Guru. And by the mercy of the Shiksha Guru, one can understand a little bit the glories of his Diksha Guru. Just like an uncle. When the father passes away and the children are very young, they're not ready to receive the inheritance of their father. But at a certain time when they come of age, the father informs them, this is what your father was like. This is what he wanted for you. Your love for your father only increases, but you also love the uncle. So this is the journey we have with Srila Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada, two of the two most compassionate Mahabharavas who are struggling so much on our behalf 
to establish this pure current of bhakti that's coming down in our Rupa Nupa Guru Vajra. So I want to pray on this day that both Srila Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev will continue to, to shine the sunshine of their causeless mercy into my dark heart so that one day I can have a drop of desire to attain the service of Krishna as a maid servant of Srimati Radhika, the last one. me to do. I may have some general indications, you know, 
but I don't have personal contact with them. He's not personally coming there and showing the exact. But Gurudev, when the when the guru is present, he can actually give that will to you. He can actually emanate that will to you. So then, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, he showed another side to the story also. One disciple was dying in Dhaka, and he couldn't get to him, and he wanted to give him initiation. So he went to a telephone, and he gave him initiation over the phone, showing that his will is to give this person initiation. And no matter even if it's a telephone, I'm going to give him initiation. And the power of Krishna is going to take that Shabda Brahman to him, and he's going to get it. So this, this shows how much the, the, the importance of the will of the Guru being there. It isn't that I can just think, oh, there's, there's a statement that I sh everybody should become Guru. Oh, sure, I should become Guru. Oh, I should initiate. Oh, this is the, if the will of the Guru is not giving to you, and your desire isn't qualified to accept it, then it isn't there. No matter all my speculation, it's, it's so much important to be in the personal contact with the Guru. He can convey his will to you. And even he's, and, and many of us can tell you for sure, he's even conveying Srila Prabhupada's will to us. He's just like a funnel, just energizing us so much and what Prabhupada's will was and giving us so much insight on what to do and what not to do. But it isn't, it isn't the position of a, of a person who's uh, in our condition to just force ourselves in any way upon the Guru. It's for us just to give him some pleasure and for him to give us his energy by his will. And certainly he will. He knows our desire, he knows our heart. He knows that actually what we need. So even even if he wants to, he can initiate by uh, just the telephone. There's no obstructions to his will. Yet our desires we cannot force. And if we do at, at all, just force him by our desires, immediately our devotional services. Because because bhakti, you know, and the Madhurya Kadavini, it's, it's stated that bhakti is supreme and independent. I'm getting bhakti and she's taking refuge in the pure, pure devotee. So it's for me to somehow or other see if, if, if I at all, if I at all want connection with my Srila Prabhupada, if I at all want connection with my Srila Prabhupada, I see his representative. I see Gurudev. And I give him some pleasure. And he, he will definitely funnel that pleasure of, of my Gurudev Srila Prabhupada to me. Definitely. And give, us, give me so much energy. But if I become disconnected and I neglect the presence of a pure devotee, how, how is Prabhupada wants to give me so much mercy? But how, how am I supposed to interpret it? Or how am I supposed to handle it? I'm, 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 I don't have the capability to be able even to digest it. So I need that person present so that they can funnel that mercy on to me. And, and give me uh, my advancement in spiritual knowledge.
to distribute is very high and mellow of devotional service, especially the one that is experimented by the Gopis, the Raja Gopis, and especially by Shimati Rajika. So today is the day where the Sangatan Kuman was to be distributed by the personality and at the same time the distribution of that very high confidential, very secret tour, the service of Shimati Radhika. The service of Shimati Radhika and her mother and especially the service of herself as her, her monja. So we know, we understand that on that day, Prabhupada appeared and everything was already prepared. Mahatabu came and he, he established all his desires and for Shivarupa Goswami to go them down in his books. Then Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami and the other Goswamis wrote all those books and gave everything to the Ajita Goswami who prepared those books. He organized the first Sanatan party. He organized the, the three travels. At the same time, Shri Krishna Skaridat Goswami was also compiling all those moods of Mahaprabhu received from Shri Svaruta Muda Goswami, Raghunata Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Raghunata Svaruta Muda in his Chaitanya Charanta Muda. So Mahaprabhu was preparing all this, the Goswami were preparing their books, the Sangatan movement of distributing those very incredible books were being uh, organized by Jiva Goswami, synthesized in Shri Chaitanya Charita Vita by Krishna Svaraj Goswami. Then Narodam Nestakur, finishing in his bhajan, all his transcendent for Pranda, he gave his beautiful poetry, Prem Bhakti Chandrika, Vartana, all the incredible Purushastra, Pranta, Vasiti Vanta. And then all this nectar explodes. The, in the hands of Shri Chakravarti who again protected and developed in his beautiful tikas, so many tikas and also different grantas uh, that he wrote. So uh, that's the strong current of the brain party, even the by Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was coming down, coming down, coming down in this way, Shri Chakravarti Thakur, then arrived in the hands of Shri Chakravarti Thakur. Was the one who started to give the a picture of how to spread that movement is a precious tool, so fragile, so confidential, all over the world. He was like, yeah, okay. And then the flow continued when he passed down in the hands of Shilabak Shilabak Shilabak. He was like the engineer who thought the different technical ways how to establish the spreading of the Sangatan movement all over the world and the different uh, ways to establish practically the movement with the different ashrams and so many things for ladies, for men, for receiving all the traditional souls who will be starting to the structure of the Sangatan movement. And then Shilabak Sinatha Sarekita Tempo cast down those uh, jewels in the hands of so that is today's happiness that is uh, an amazing amazing uh, astonishing thing Prabhupada received those orders from Shilavati Siddhanta and then he was ordered to spread the Sankhita movement so he published those books he went to the west met so many disciples and in those books, he gave the most precious tools of the yeah. So what happened really, that most confidential knowledge that was given in the books of Prabhupada, actually, they are there. So, especially in Ishman Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Ishman Bhagavatam, especially in Chaitanya Charitam. There is some incredible truth which are like the ecstasies of the devotees. 
Prabhupada is explaining that this books at his ecstasis. But in his purpose, he's putting different ecstasies of the devotees. Like in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada is giving us the ecstasy of Sri Aradhinanda Sosami by putting it on purpose, this beautiful prayer, which is uh, describing the beautiful form of Shimatya, Radhika, Raman Mutala, Mutala, Spokka. So that's an incredible description of Shimatya Radhika. Should I go to that by chance? I was there only once for Adashtami and that year, that was four years ago, I don't remember, he gave us that beautiful Raymond Mutana Sutra to all of us to meditate, like establishing the beautiful form of Shimati Radhika in the heart of all his followers. So there is another place where Prabhupada is saying what kind of ecstasy the devotees have in their heart and is putting the verse is that that's a long term that is should that the verse it is. So uh, the Prabhupada is saying this, this is the ecstasy of the devotees. So those incredible forms are totally unaccessible for us. So what happened actually Prabhupada himself those jewels in his in a special box that were his books. He closed the box. How did he close the box? The lovely. He said you should all worship in the great Eshwarya. You should think Radha and Krishna, they are Lakshmi and Narayan. So like this was in the box. But within the box is so many chapters, but closing it at the same time. So what is the secret behind it? Is that actually the closing and get the key to someone special that those tools, they cannot be understood by ourselves. Trying to read Prabhupada's books by ourselves, we get tricked by certainly we go back to Bode. But we don't want so much to go back to Bode. We want to attend the special service that I the line of the very uh, seat of Srila Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev, which are the divine service of Srimati Radhika. So the key, we left it that sense to one very specific person as it was recounted by Prabhupada and Radhimuddhi that he left the key with one very special person. He could open his books and reveal to us what were those doors in his books. And that is Shila Pakirananda and Radhimuddhi. Without his mercy, how it was possible to understand? Shri Prabhupada's books was amazing because Prabhupada was limited to spreading Hare Krishna everywhere and then with this when Prabhupada specially left we thought oh let's enjoy uh, let's have a wine let's uh, enjoy maybe we can go to live on the planet some devotees will say oh if I can reach even the Gita Vishnu is so nice and it's a pretty great for me but it's you know, even Krishna Loka maybe it's too high so we had so many different conceptions from karma, how many we can reach to the beautiful uh, the heavenly planet and enjoy there so nicely. Or some maybe we can study Prabhupada's books and we can try to reach this uh, back to God, the Mukti, the liberation. So, so many different conceptions, but they were not the final or even the real conception or even the final conception. But that conception of the pure service of Rajiv, the Rajiv, the Rajiv, Rasi, especially the Rajiv of how it was possible to understand. It's not possible to understand by yourself, just by making the progress of yours. The key is that the, the, the lotus seat of the pure Vaishnava, so that is the Adana Tade, Vaishnava Rastani, we can understand the pure Vaishnava goals only at the feet of the pure Vaishnava. So we like the key. How did he left the key to the good day? Practically speaking, Prabhupada did it. He did it by asking the good day very affectionately at the end of his manifest last night. Please, I want you to get the good thing somebody with your mother hands. And we know how much affection there must be in those because by the letters that Prabhupada wrote the good day that were manifested to us after we see so many and the loving feelings of Prabhupada to us here today. So he said, please put me in Samadhi with your own feelings. Then 
he has keep the public because uh, said by different speakers that please I want you to train my disciples. Please take care of them, train them. I've gathered so many monkeys. And it's true that was the desire of Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada manifested at one point that he had one desire that he could not fulfill really. And he was a bit unhappy for that. That was the desire that he could not train personally his devotees. So this very high class backing. He needs a special training because it is not just you follow some rules and regulations, but the mood of the Sri Guru, the mood of that Bhakta, has to come in the heart of the devotees. So that needs a special training. So Prabhupada did so many things. Prabhupada at this time he was so inaccessible, very difficult. We had to serve through the devotees. Prabhupada was making a point that always he wanted his disciples that you please work with that leader, please work with that leader, please work with that leader, please work with that leader. It was for us, you back down, but I don't want to share But maybe she has a different experience, but for me, for us, where I back down myself, I joined in 1975, I was in 1975, but we knew only our leaders, so Robert was like an accessible. Worship like Lakshminari. Prabhupada was bringing the highest jewel also of Radhika's sale to all conditions, everything, everywhere. But giving the most precious things in imagine. So it was like a incredible mango from the top of the tree. It was so careful. Prabhupada was so gambir, so brave. It was so brave for the Guru Goswami because he was given that responsibility to distribute that highest, 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 highest brain. But he was given the responsibility to give it to everyone. So this, in fact, generally, he was explaining those books, they are doing everything. Sometimes Prabhupada said that Prabhupada Prabhu was asking Prabhupada, what do we give a book? What happens? And Prabhupada said, they become initiated. So, in the sense that they start the school, that's what I understand. They start the school. That was amazing. Prabhupada was that day, the day where that personality was bringing the highest to all living entities. But he had to be so careful. He didn't want to spoil that because he wanted us to attend to really shit at the end. So he left that business of the trainers to Shilaku Rupesh. And he's the next problem in charge, like Prabhupada said. He's the next he said we have to understand. We have to follow the next providence of Sharia. So he said that it will be like after so, so many years ago. But by the mercy, by the mercy of Shia Prabhupada, we have some kind of interrelation to understand that the next providence of Sharia is the one who knows his books. Prabhupada was saying in a conversation that someone who can give the books is someone who knows the books. Not that I don't want to say that those who write the books, we have to uh, read them or hear directly from them. No, but those who know the books, we have to take shape very well. So that most amazing fragile, confidential, sweet, nectar in the uh, fruit that Robert gave, what he wanted was he was so cautious, so, so careful. So that's why he loved it so carefully. But that first they shouted to come and charge them. That you will give us intelligence. So what is that intelligence? Intelligence is an element. Where is that process? Where is it going? So our God process all over the world and their disciples are doing so wonderful, they are spreading the second and one so nice. But truly, if we can take shelter of your devotee, we make us understand what the incredible truths are about those books, then that will be really accomplishing the highest desire of So that today is a special day, a reason day. So many devotees are growing by Europe, everywhere it's wonderful. And it is that day where the most incredible mercy was given in such an amazingly expert way that everyone will benefit now and for so many generations. And today is training so many, so many, so many disciples, devotees, who are for the winning to make us understand what is that meaning now which is the Prabhupada's good sentiment in a return we can share with the other devotees. Whatever they are doing is totally fine, it's perfect, but if we can help them 
for the current problems with that that would be a very great service for us. And on that day I pretty much never um that if I can do a little bit of service in that matter with the helping them with the service and serving the devotees that we should be grateful. Oh my God, so beautiful. 